And today I'll, uh, I'll give you a bit of an insight on how our lithium business uh, is evolving um, uh, and moving further downstream. Now I've printed off, so if anyone wants to see the disclaimer, you should read the paper version. All right, our, our two commodity focuses are lithium and titanium. We've recently added cobalt. And so our, our investment thematic is we are conservative exposure um, to the energy storage revolution. And one of the things in the lithium industry that big and small producers have got wrong is how fast demand is growing. We have consistently got it wrong. We've undershot completely. Um, we sold equity in our mines at various stages over the last two years and we've got very, very good valuations. Uh, but we've increased our price uh, this year alone from about uh, $570 a tonne to about $750 from 1 July we'll move higher than that. Um, and this is what's driving it is the investment, uh, particularly uh, in Asia, into the lithium battery factories. Now these factories take three, four, five years, uh, lots of robotics, and they're building them now. So. Between now and in, in the next five years, you're going to see it increase by a factor of six, which is, which is normally fairly hard to see. But, uh, but the guys at Umicor last week uh, announced, this thing's a bit jumpy, um, announced that they were going to not only increase their investment in cathode production for these batteries, they'd in, they're sort of halfway or three quarters of the way through doubling it, then they're going to take that and they're going to take it up by a factor of three. So Umicore are investing half a billion euros to take their cathode capacity to six times what it was in 2015. So it is real. Um, so what we've got is we've got captive sources of lithium and titanium, the lithium's in production. We've got downstream technologies that can push us down the bottom end of the, ca uh, the cost curve. So we're looking at all parts of the battery. So lithium uh, cobalt to go into the cathode, lithium titanate uh, into the anode. Uh, and just to top it off, we've got a lithium battery recycling process using the metallurgical skills that we have uh, in the other businesses. So we play in a, a number of parts uh, and positions in the supply chain. So we've developed or co-developed Mount Marion, which at full production uh, in its current configuration is about 50,000 tonnes of LCE, which is about 20% of the world's production. And we're just looking at tweaking that up. Uh, we've got technology for electrolyzing lithium chlorides through to hydroxides. Um, we're looking at downstreaming uh, in WA. We've got some really big mines. There's Green Bushes, Mount Marion, uh, and there's a couple up in the Pilbara as well. Um, we've recently made some lithium titanate and we are uh, testing that in a battery uh, manufacturer at the moment um, and we developed this this lithium battery recycling process I mean, we've been in lithium for eight years so it's not sort of overnight uh, titanium for 13 uh, the cobalt really about a year uh, and that was just off the back of some discussions in London with the world's biggest cobalt buyer and a copper cobalt producer in the DRC and they they couldn't do business um, because all the cobalt was getting flown back to China um, you couldn't buy LME cobalt for physical delivery. I couldn't get a ring dealer to make us a call option market in it. So I thought, well, what's the best way to get cobalt? Then we had a look and thought, well, these lithium batteries, the cobalt ones, the ones in your, in your uh, laptops and phones are 20% by weight cobalt, right? It's like, you know, you've got to work out a process to mill six ounce gold. You can make some errors and still make some really good money. So we've got a hard rock lithium operation. We looked at downstreaming it using conventional technology. Uh, then in sort of about 2011, 2012, we looked at electrolyzing it, just basically adapting the chloralkali. Um, we've then adapted that to brines because their, their primary oil source is lithium chloride. Um, we're doing R&D uh, to selectively extract the lithium out of the brines and purify it. And then we would stick it back in the electrolyzer. And then just to cap it off um, is our lithium cobalt. So I'll fly through this. So Mount Marion, we've got a, a sale process underway for the remaining equity in the business. Um, we did offer it to our partners and we're in a third party sale process. It's fairly unique. 
So that's what it looks like, uh, built from scratch, poured the first concrete in October 2015. We've had three, we exported about 50,000 tonnes of concentrates uh, in February, March, April. Next shipment about 30,000 tonnes uh, leaving this month uh, at full production. In that configuration, we'll do about 400,000 tonnes uh, of concentrate. Uh, and really, uh, as one of the earlier speakers said, you know, in, in industrial minerals or tech metals, you've got to have someone on the other end to buy this stuff, uh, otherwise it's just incurring costs. So our second stage, one is to be, get the mine up and running um, and monetize that, and then actually to move further downstream, because if you had a choice of where to invest a dollar, you would go a little further downstream in a normalized market, and I don't think we're in a normalized market, and it may not return to normal for four or five years. Um, the IRRs in downstreaming are about twice as good as the upstream. Uh, so we're looking uh, at a standalone downstream operation um, using, we've got great reagents, we've got one of the world's biggest reserves of gas, we've got power, electricity, uh, you name it. And, uh, and so we're going through test work, vendor test work now. Hope to make a decision next year on that. The Eli process, uh, as I said, you know, we needed something to compete with the Brian guys and try to get in front of the Chinese converters. So essentially we adapted the chloralkali, we took the, the lithium, put it in hydrochloric acid, uh, purified it around electricity, um, and it works really, really well. Pushed us down the bottom end of the cost curve. Then we worked out it would actually be better if we applied it to brines. So we had a leading global engineering company that does a lot of work in lithium, benchmark our process against the normal uh, carbonate cost sizing route for brine producers to produce lithium hydroxide. Uh, and it makes a massive difference for these guys. But, you know, we don't want to get into the brines in terms of the capex and the timing. I mean, that's one of the beautiful things about lithium. Half comes from rock. It's expensive uh, to do, do it in Australia. It's expensive to do it uh, in Argentina or Chile. Uh, and that's going to naturally, um, supply's going to take longer to get to the market. But they're building these battery plants and flying at it. So then, yes, we'll go to the, the lithium battery recycling. We developed, uh, co-developed the technology here. We've got an R&D facility in Montreal. Uh, we've got some really good, smart guys there, uh, Dr. Harris. Um, we own 50% of the IP and got an exclusive licence to uh, exploit the technology. So, um, you know, why we went for it? I mean, there's the consumer electronic batteries, lithium cobaltate, there's less than 5% of these batteries are recycled. They're stockpiled everywhere. Um, the car batteries, they will come, but in time. Right, so what we're looking to do then is really to close the loop uh, on these batteries. Initially, we just looked at the cobalt. Now, in our pilot plant, which we are currently building and will run next quarter, uh, we will recover the nickel, um, copper, manganese, that sort of stuff. So what we're looking at is, we're looking, and we did the study on a 10 ton per day plant, which you would put next to one of these battery making plants. Uh, basically take the wastage and the off spec. So you know, there's wastage in the cathodes, there's wastage in the cell production. And for these guys, it's a good way to get up the curve, uh, to get used to the metallurgy, because they're gonna have to build a much bigger plant when all the battery packs come back in five or six years, depending on the quality. So this is what the commercial plant, this is a 10 tonne a day plant. The capex was about four and a half million US. It was seven 40 foot sea containers. We need a concrete hard stand of about 1500 square metres to put it on, uh, pretty much self-contained. The upshot from, a, from the uh, engineering cost study at a scoping study level, and this was ignoring any byproduct credit. This was just strictly on the cobalt. Uh, pushed it down to four bucks forty-five a pound. Uh, so logically, we, we then proceeded. We're going to a hundred kilo a day feed rate of EV batteries, NMC format <coughs> or NMC cathode format, and uh, and we can construct and commission this in forty-two weeks. And the good thing is we can do it off our balance, our own balance sheet, because we've got seventy million bucks in cash and investments. So our commercialisation plan is to have, uh, subject to the board approval and the various studies, is to have this in commercial operation by the end of 2018 and speed to market you know, is certainly one of, uh, one of the methods that we, we have to approach to commercialise this. 
Uh, there is competition uh, and we're running partner and site selection processes at the moment. So lithium is one, one part of our business. We've got the world's second highest grade titanium deposit, second only to Quebec's uh, QIT. So look, we're not resource constrained, which is good. And uh, so we are current, we've con finished a pre-feasibility study uh, and we are doing the metallurgical drilling to move into a full pilot phase. Technology originally developed in Canada. Uh, the pilot plant will also be at our R&D facility in Montreal. We'll run that later in the year. Uh, essentially what we're doing is taking an oxide, putting it in a hydrochloric solution, uh, precipitating it out as a, a titanium hydroxide um, that can then go pretty much straight into the pigment process. All of the cost advantages are in the titanium hydroxide and basically we're looking at, A, removing all the iron waste that's a big problem in, in the Chinese pigment industry uh, and at industry leading costs. So, you know, the flexibility that producing a hydroxide, one, we can go to pigment, we can save, you know, the, the engineering studies say we can save $1,000 a tonne on your OPEX, which is pretty significant. Um, we have produced titanium nanotubes used for water purification, um, we've recently produced some lithium titanate. That's a fantastic anode material. Uh, we haven't gone to metal yet, but you know we could at some stage in the future. I'll just go into quickly a R and D phase. So you know, lithium titanate. What a beautiful marriage of two of the commodities that we're in. Um, essentially, it uh, you're exploiting the physical characteristics of it as an anode. I mean, graphite's got a surface area of about three square metres a gram. Lithium titanate's 100 square metres a gram. Um, you can unbelievably, you can charge unbelievably quickly out of these things. An iPhone would charge in about a minute. Um, and you know, the, the, the cycle life, and I've chosen a reasonable size battery here, a 20 million, uh, we can read it later in the paper version, but th these are what you would put in a car. And the cycle life there is about, 40 odd thousand or 30 odd thousand or something like that. So it lasts an incredible amount of time, um, very robust. And, you know, we think that it'll become the choice for EVs and conventional stop start engines. The, the Porsche E uh, mission or mission E, which they call the Tesla killer. So I'll take a slightly different bend on Tesla. Um, this thing will, same range, but it'll recharge wirelessly in 15 minutes. And with the, the batteries that are coming on, that'll come even uh, come down even more. Uh, and Johnson Controls and Toshiba are building the 12 volt batteries now. So you know we see that as a, a as another value add. Oh, look, I've got too much to go through, but look, you can come and get me at any other time. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.